There's been a lot of talk on the town lately about bringing back extinct animals like the dodo bird, the thylacine, the woolly mammoth. But what if I were to tell you these animals can't actually come back and they're actually gone forever. They're gone for good. Let me backtrack a little bit. There's this company called Colossal Bioscience and their whole aim is to bring back extinct animals that humans are directly involved in causing their extinction. Their three main target species is the woolly mammoth, the thylacine or the Tasmanian tiger, and the dodo bird. Now I know some astute observers are asking themselves, are they lying about it? No, in fact they're quite open with how this whole process works. These animals aren't being cloned, they're going through a process called de-extinction and they're quite open about this. Well if they're not lying, then what's the whole point of this video? I want to educate people on what's actually going on at Colossal Bioscience and what their aims are, because they can't really bring these animals back. So now the question is, what the fuck is the difference between cloning and de-extinction? In order to clone something, it would be a one-to-one. -one. Say your dearest dog dies. You can take some DNA and clone it and get a genetic replica of that animal. But since we're working with extinct animals here, they can't exactly get living material to make a one-to-one -one clone of these animals. So these animals are getting put to a process called de-extinction to basically do a real-life Jurassic Park. To Jurassic Park. You guys remember being a little child and watching Jurassic Park with such wonders. Think back to the Mr. DNA scene, and that's pretty much what the fuck they're doing, just minus the toe DNA and all the reptile shit. They're doing a legit Jurassic Park. Let's get into the meat and potatoes, if you will, the main course. How exactly do they plan on bringing these animals back, and what exactly is the process of de-extinction? For each of these animals, it looks a tiny bit different, so I'm going to run through them all. And I'm going to leave the most controversial one for last. What the fuck's up, Diddy? But the first on the chopping block is the thylacine or the Tasmanian tiger. This dude got absolutely fucked by us. When European settlers came to Tasmania, they put a bounty on his head because they were scared that he was going to kill livestock. By 1936, the last one died in captivity. They were hunted to extinction because, I don't know, humans are kind of shitty and we suck. I'm sure there were other remnant populations still out in the wild of Tasmania and shit, but the last one that we know of died in 1936. His name was Benjamin. So now exactly, what is the plan to bring these animals back? Hybridization. They plan on taking their closest living relative, in this case the thylacines is the fat-tailed dunner, which is a small little marsupial-like fuck. You would have never guessed it's the closest living relative to the Tasmanian tiger. They plan on taking the genome of the fat-tailed dunnard and the genome of the thylacine, basically cutting out the differences, putting in the thylacine's DNA into the dunnard's DNA and then sprinkle in some gene editing and eventually will pop out an animal that looks like the thylacine. They're making a proxy to the extinct counterpart. They're not bringing back the exact thing. All these animals are going to be proxy animals. They're not going to be the exact thing. They're all going to be hybrids of the closest living relatives and their extinct counterparts. But Colossal Bioscience does aim to get 99.999% similarity to the extinct counterpart and refine it over time. How long will that process take? Nobody fucking knows. This is unprecedented shit that we're doing. The last melon. Let's keep the Jurassic Park train going. We're talking about the dodo bird this time. Dodo bird was chosen because of its tragic story. We, as humans, came and raided the island, basically, causing their downfall. Dodo birds live on the island of Mauritius, which is off the coast of Madagascar, and then Madagascar is off the coast of Africa. 
if you know your geography. In the 1600s, sailors would stop at the island of Mauritius. In doing so, they brought a bunch of invasive species, and they also just basically clubbed them to death. They ate them, even though they apparently tasted like shit. But a fat bird could feed a lot of sailors, and the dodo birds were some thick-ass boys. But the ultimate downfall was the invasive species. You see, us humans brought animals that were whores for eggs. We brought over pigs and rats, and they demolish eggs. The dodo bird only has a singular large egg. They don't have a clutch of many, and this low fecundity rate made their downfall inevitable. They simply couldn't compete with the invasive species that sailors brought, and also the pressures of sailors hunting them. And that spelled their downfall. So now what's the plan? Once again, the recipe is still the same. We're cooking with the same grease. They're gonna take the cousin, which is the Nicobar pigeon, which is this very pretty pigeon, quite contrasted to the very drab dodo bird. But it's a little different this time. They plan on editing the germ cell. The germ cell is a cell that in males will inevitably become the sperm, and in females it will inevitably become the egg. They plan on editing this cell and sprinkling in some DNA from the dodo bird and some genetic editing on top of that. They then plan to put this edited cell into a proxy egg, either the Nicobar pigeon's egg or the chicken egg. Currently, we're mad far from that being an actual reality. Wait a minute, I thought rhinos were vegetarians. An excellent point! Shut up! We're gonna talk about the most controversial in my opinion. This might be last, but not least, the woolly mammoth. The reason this is so controversial in my opinion, because it's hard to quantify what actually led to the extinction of the mammoth. The mammoth existed over 10,000 years ago, at the end of the last ice age. And during this time, climates were warming. And it's hard to be a shaggy fucking animal when, you know, it's warm out. Now, humans might have contributed to it, but humans wouldn't be the downfall for the mammoth. Now, my fellow Minecrafters, the recipe is still the fucking same. We're going to take the closest living relative, which is the Asian elephant, take out some of its DNA, put in some of the woolly mammoth's DNA, sprinkle in some gene editing to have more hair growth, bigger tusks, and to grow just overall bigger. They plan on making a Teenage Mutant Ninja Mammoth or some shit. They, they dubbed it themselves a cold tolerant elephant. Now that the science bullshit is over, why should we bring these animals back? And there's a number of reasons why they would be good. In the case of the thylacine or the Tasmanian tiger, having a predator back on the island would be good. Tasmanian devils are faced with a disease called facial tumor disease. That is a disease that spreads cancer. And it's a gnarly looking disease, and it fucks up the population badly. But having a predator reintroduced to the island of Tasmania could help cull the weak and slow the spread of disease. So that's one good thing. What about another one? Why are they bringing back the dodo bird? To be honest, I really can't fucking tell a reason why they're bringing back the dodo bird other than just to restore the ecosystem of the island of Mauritius. Which is cool, I guess, but I don't know. It's thought that the mammoth could somehow fight climate change. Climate is ever-changing, but with the mammoth back in the tundras, under human supervision, I would assume, hopefully, they could create their own habitat called the mammoth steppe, which used to exist. The mammoth steppe is basically flat tundra with no trees or anything because they've been plowed down by the mammoths. And this ecosystem is thought to maybe be able to reflect the sun's rays, slowing global warming. Now, some people have argued that these really aren't the best of reasons to bring these animals back. And there's still many unknowns, like their behaviors and how they will act. These animals aren't going to be their real extinct counterparts. 
And on top of it, we do not know the intricacies of these animals and their social habitats. So we don't know if these cloned animals will act similar to their extinct counterparts. There's just a lot of unknowns with these. But at the end of the day, Colossal Bioscience has been very open with what they want to do and how they're doing it. My opinion is this feels kind of fake. We're bringing back these animals, but we're not bringing back the ones that used to actually exist and roam the world. We're bringing back a proxy animal that looks like it and might not even really act like it. But nonetheless, I'm still excited to see where this is going to go. I would like to see something that maybe looks like a mammoth one day. That all being said, I'm signing off. I would love it if you like and subscribe, please. Thank you.